So one of the videos that has been getting some traction on this channel is this video I did on my pregnancy doing my PhD. Um, and I've gotten quite a, a lot of good feedback on that video from those of you that have watched it. So first of all, thank you so much for watching that and for leaving me feedback. But this particular video is actually based on a, a message I had received from Zainab who had uh, sent me a LinkedIn message asking about um, nursing doing grad school as well as like balancing motherhood with like things maybe going wrong in the lab and you having to stay over which can happen when you are in a lab so in today's video I'm just going to share some of my very imperfect tips for handling motherhood with a PhD and even handling motherhood after a PhD whilst you're doing a postdoc or you're entering into a new career these are imperfect tips i don't claim to be a super mother i have seen people who mother much better than me but the beauty of parenting and the beauty of motherhood specifically is that you don't have to pressure yourself to do it like somebody else has done it and I hope that you can take that away from this video that as I shared these tips, they're guidelines, they're suggestions. You by no means have to do them, right? Because every family works differently and what may work very well for my family may not work so great for your family, but we can learn and pick up things from other people's lives and adapt them to our own situation, okay? So the first suggestion is go find a breast pump if you plan on on breastfeeding your child um, and you know of course you're not gonna be around 24 7 to breastfeed your child then I highly recommend getting a breast pump now if you're based in the United States you can walk into a Walmart a Target a baby's for us I don't know if those still exist but <laughs> some kind of store like that and buy a breast pump usually they'll run anywhere from as low as you know twenty dollars for like a manual pump to somewhere in the hundreds of dollars for the one that you can put on and it pumps itself right so you have these the this range of breast pumps um and i had a breast pump and so i took my breast pump to work with me and then i would have breaks where i would pump the breast milk um in between doing experiments in the lab to be honest and I would have um, I always had these bags so these were bags that would sometimes come with a breast pump the brand that I specifically used I think was one called Lansana they're not sponsoring this video but I had those I had about a hundred bags of those and I think if I look hard enough I may still find <laughs> some of those bags somewhere I used a lot of them but I would pump the breast milk into those bags I'd write dates on them and then I'll keep them um, cool now of course if you're working in a lab situation you would not be able to keep it in your lab refrigerator so don't do that but I always had a lunchbox with me and I would have cold packs in there so if I did pump during work I would put them in my lunch bag with the cold um, the cold things the cold packs yes the cold packs and then I would keep it until I, I went home when I went home I would refrigerate it and at some point you know my child would have it the second thing was having a support system if you watch that video where I talked about being a pregnant PhD student I did talk about the fact that I did have a support system so when I first had my baby my mother did travel from Ghana that's why I'm from originally my mother traveled from Ghana and was with me for about three months shortly after she left I did have my mother-in-law also come and be with us for six months. So for about 10 months of my child's life, I had help. I had significant help from both my mom and my mother-in-law. And my husband was also a great help. And so when I was leaving the house, I knew that my mother-in-law or my mom would take the breast milk. They would warm it up. They usually would leave it in a bowl of warm water. I don't recommend that you microwave your breast milk um, and they would leave it out make sure it warmed up to body temperature and then feed my son the thing also is that um, I introduced my son to formula pretty early 
um, you know, and again, like I said, everybody is free to parent the way they want to. And so if you don't want to give your child formula at all, that's okay. I did both. I did, I think, exclusive breastfeeding for about six weeks. And then after six weeks, I had to go to a conference and my husband called me telling me that my son was really hungry and like drinking up all the breast milk I had left. And I'm like, you guys are going to have to give him formula. So that's how he was introduced to formula. And so whilst we did not give him formula exclusively, he did have some formula mixed in his food. Uh, with the breast milk you know so that's what we did and so either my my um my mother-in-law my mom or my husband if he was around would help with feeding my child and so having that support system was very very helpful in helping me balance going to the lab doing experiments if I had to stay late that meant I would have to communicate that usually if when I left the house around 8 or yeah by 8 or so I leave the house they would expect that I wouldn't be home until about 6 or 7 p.m. The way I structured my experiments, I tried to keep it such that I didn't have to stay in labs overnight. And my experiments really did not require that. So I tried to do everything within the day and within the time because I knew that no matter what, I still have to go home. I'm still a mom, right? I still have to go home. So, but if there was a case like that where I'd have to... Um, spend more time than I realize that I have to spend I would have to communicate that so having open communication with your support system is also important at a point both my mother and mother-in-law left and it was left with my husband and I and we both had to work so we ended up um, finding a nearby daycare center which in the end I wasn't happy with um, because I think they starved my child. <laughs> That's a whole other story. But um, they were okay. They were not like a terrible daycare. They were an okay daycare. So anyway, I took my child there. We would leave him there and we had to make sure to get him before 6 p.m. So again, we'd leave the house around 8, drop him off by then and then pick him up before that time so the time my um the time that I didn't have any help we didn't have anybody to help us and we both had to go to work we did rely on a daycare that was close to us now you would have to discuss with your support system what you really want to do because daycare especially if you're based in the United States is not cheap um, at the time when we were taking our son to daycare, and this was back in 2014, 2015, um, we were paying $600 a month. It was $150 a week to take my child to daycare for, I think, three days a week. So if you were taking him to daycare for all the days of the week, then it would be way more than that. So that was $600. And that was almost we were paying at that time the rent on our apartment was eight hundred dollars so we were paying daycare that was almost as as expensive as rent and that was even on the cheaper end like if you really wanted like a top-notch daycare you would be looking at a thousand thousand five hundred dollars a month and so some people would work just to pay the daycare right so what ended up happening and again this you know you can slice and dice this however you want is my husband decided that he would be home to take care of my child and I would work. And so that's the arrangement we had for quite a long time. It worked out for us and we ended up having a full-time parent at home for my child while he worked on other things too, to help financially with the family. He stayed at home and took care of our son. So that ended up working up for us and until he was able to go to um, kindergarten and, and regular school now. And then as far as like maybe cooking or laundry and all these other things that are chores in the home that I would still have to do. One of the things I've learned to do is to prepare ahead. And so on the weekends, I try to make like a bowl of stew, soup, rice. Like I'll try to like do some grocery shopping, make sure we have food in the house, right? We can have some snacks in the house that you can easily get to if you come home and you're hungry and you know, the food is not ready yet, you know, but most of the time, the way that I've, you know, 
my husband and I have run our household is I try or we try. My husband is also a really great cook, but we'll try to cook a lot of food that will last us a week so that it's not like every time we come home, like now we're, we're going to take all these raw materials and make brand new food. And so um, we always have meals that are pre-prepared um, on the weekends and we can heat it up in the microwave. We'll just toss it in the oven and eat. And so we have food throughout the week. There'll be one or two times the week where we make something from scratch but by and large we both try to make meals usually I'll try he like when he cooks it's really good but he cooks like small amounts of food <laughs> it's really good though but usually I'm the one that cooks um, mo most of the, like the bulk of the food um, and so I'll do that and then we'll have food for the rest of the week so planning and prepping ahead also helps when my son um, was going to school now when the pandemic so there's no school but when he also had to go to school I'll make sure to get the snacks and the things that he needs to take to school with him on the weekend so that I know that okay I'm gonna give him the portions of this snack or whatever throughout the week so that he can take to school so a lot of planning ahead has really really helped me um having a support system has been great for me and then when you know my child was really little and was still breastfeeding the thing that was really helpful was really pumping the breast milk and refrigerating it that was the only way i was able to keep him on breast milk for almost 11 months well 12 months of his life all right so he was weaned around 12 months so it's possible it's doable it's not easy it's not perfect but i hope this video helped somebody if it did make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below if you're a phd if you're a mom if you are done with your phd how are you balancing motherhood with this life let me know in the comments below